cover crop for nitrogen fixation, for adding organic matter, for breaking up soil compaction, for suppressing weeds, for increasing water infiltration? Is there a cover crop that performs all these functions? And how will it fit into my crop rotation? In this video, we'll be looking at the characteristics of these 16 cover crop species behind me to understand their benefits and drawbacks for specific services. For the last two months, these cover crops have been grown in the greenhouse in four inch diameter PVC tubes that are about two and a half feet long. And although these cover crops were grown in potting soil, which is a much easier medium for roots to grow through compared to field soil, we'll gain some useful insights by comparing the root systems of these different cover crop species. The species we've grown come from the grass, legume, brassica, and a few other less represented plant families. Some of these species are winter annuals, and some are summer annuals. While some are winter hardy in New York State, while others are not. The amount of benefits we get from the cover crop species in this video depend on how long the cover crop is allowed to grow and the amount of biomass it can produce. Let's start with the grasses. We grew six annual grass cover crop species, cereal rye, triticale, annual ryegrass, oats, sorghum sudan grass, and pearl millet. Grass cover crops tend to have robust root systems below ground that support the following services. They are great end scavengers, weed suppressors, great for building soil organic matter, keeping the soil in place, and are the best hosts for mycorrhizal fungi. Let's start with the most widely planted winter annual grass cover crop in the United States, cereal rye. Cereal rye is a winter annual cover crop, also known as a cool season grass, which means this cover crop is planted in fall and terminated in spring because this cover crop is winter hardy. Cereal rye is the most reliable cover crop to get in late. If you miss windows for other winter annuals, there is always cereal rye. Therefore, it's sometimes the only option for planting a cover crop in October or later. It's a great end scavenger, weed suppressor, and a great cover crop for adding lots of organic matter to the soil. Cereal rye is good at performing these services, partially because it can produce a lot of root biomass. Next, we have triticale, which is another winter annual grass that is winter hardy. It's a cross between cereal rye and winter wheat. It's been shown to have similar traits as cereal rye, but is a little bit less aggressive. In a recent study comparing root systems of cover crop species, we found that triticale produce much more root biomass in the between row space than crimson clover and canola. The ability of grass roots to produce more roots in the between row space may be an important way that these grasses are adept at scavenging nitrogen and competing with weeds. Oats are another cool season grass that can be planted in fall or spring, but this one is not winter hardy in New York. Planting date is August through September in fall or mid-April to mid-May in spring. Similar to the grasses above, oats are capable of producing a lot of root biomass. Annual ryegrass is another cool season grass that can be planted anytime from April to September. In fall, an ideal planting time is mid-August. Annual ryegrass is winter hardy and there is some concern it will go to seed and become a weed. Annual ryegrass is a good candidate for being interseeded in corn and many vegetable farmers use it in between vegetable beds. Annual ryegrass is known for its extensive shallow root system as you can see here. Therefore this cover crop can be one of the best options for rebuilding soil aggregates. The last two grasses are summer annual grasses, or warm season grasses, meaning they need to be planted in the summer. Like corn, sorghum sudan grass, and pearl millet photosynthesize a little bit differently than the grasses mentioned above, and are adapted to grow at high light intensities, higher temperatures, and drier growing conditions. They are not winter hardy. These cover crops pretend to produce high carbon and nitrogen ratios and lots of organic matter inputs. Sorghum sudan grass is a cross between forage type sorghum and sudan grass. Has a planting date from July 1st through mid-August. It's a heat-loving grass, grows fast, and is great at suppressing weeds. 
and is more drought tolerant than corn. Sorghum Sudan grass is unrivaled for adding organic matter to soils. Because sorghum Sudan grass produces a very large amount of above ground and below ground biomass. Sorghum Sudan grass specifically produces a lot of adventitious roots, which are these thicker diameter roots. Sorghum Sudan grass's large root system and large amount of these thicker diameter roots make it a great candidate to break up subsoil compaction. Pearl millet is another summer annual cover crop that is adapted to deal with heat and drought. Matt Ryan and his team are looking at some of these alternative summer forages that can have a slightly shorter season and be more drought tolerant. Here we have pearl millet on the right and sorghum sudan grass on the left for contrast. Interestingly, although the above ground biomass looks very similar between these two species, the root systems are very different. Pearl millet doesn't produce a lot of these thick adventitious roots that we saw in sorghum sudan grass. And as a result, it is probably not as good at breaking up compaction as sorghum sudan grass. Next, we have the legume cover crops. We grew six legume species, red clover, crimson clover, hairy vetch, Austrian winter pea, cow pea, and sun hemp. Cover crops in the legume family are the only cover crops capable of fixing atmospheric nitrogen into their tissues. So their growth is not limited by soil nitrogen. As a result, legumes tend to have the lowest carbon to nitrogen ratios and highest concentrations of nitrogen in their tissues and are therefore the best cover crops for increasing nitrogen fertility for the following cash crop. But the high tissue nitrogen concentrations of legumes make them poor candidates for reducing nitrogen leaching. Red clover is a workhorse of the Northeast. It's a biennial to wheat perennial, so you can probably only get three years out of it. Frost seeding is a common strategy to establish this cover crop in February or March. Red clover can also be planted from April through September. Red clover has a slower fall growth than crimson clover, which has more of an annual habit. Therefore, this slow growing cover crop benefits from a nurse crop. Frost seeding into winter wheat is a perfect synergy. Red clover is an excellent nitrogen fixer. Crimson clover is the most widely planted winter annual legume in the United States. But since it's not reliably winter hardy in New York, it's not so common here. Crimson clover is an annual and it has fast fall growth. But it doesn't have as much nitrogen fixation and root production as either hairy vetch or red clover. Plant by September 1st. Hairy vetch is the best choice for a winter hardy annual legume in New York State, and it's been found to be one of the best nitrogen fixers amongst the legumes. It's slow to establish and also likes to climb with its viney architecture, so it's often planted with a nurse crop, such as oats. Some organic wheat growers aren't interested in hairy vetch because some of its seed that's planted doesn't germinate right away, which is termed hard seed. Additionally, hairy vetch seed is very similar in weight to wheat seed, so it's extremely difficult to sort. Austrian winter pea is another winter annual legume that is not reliably winter hardy. It's a great candidate to be planted on organic operations because winter will provide the cover crop termination. Field peas, which are similar, can be planted in spring and are often mixed with oats. Cow pea, also known as black-eyed peas, is not actually a true pea, but rather a bean. It's a summer annual and drought tolerant. Although cow pea is a large seeded crop, research has indicated that it may be a poor weed suppressor in the northeast due to slow growth rates. It's much more common in the southern states and can have a deep taproot. Sun hemp is a fast-growing, drought-tolerant summer tropical legume that needs heat, has a planting date from mid-June through mid-July, and is able to produce substantial biomass and able to kill some soil-borne diseases and nematodes. Its seed has become much more available recently. 
Next, we grew three species from other plant families, the most important being the Brassica family. These species included forage radish, phacelia, and sunflower. Next up is forage radish, or as it's known, tillage radish. It's the most widely planted winter annual Brassica cover crop in the United States, and it's not winter hardy in the Northeast. In New York, forage radish needs to be planted by early September at the latest. One thing that is unique about brassicas compared to grasses and legumes is that they are non-mycorrhizal. Mycorrhizal fungi help the plant access immobile nutrients in the soil in exchange for plant sugars. So it's thought that the very fine roots, much finer than in grasses or legume species, is an adaption to having no mycorrhizal fungi. These very fine absorptive roots are likely why this cover crop is very responsive to high soil nitrogen and a great nitrogen scavenger. Radish offers very fa rapid fall growth and great weed suppression. The radish taproot increases infiltration and helps break up subsoil compaction. Radish and other brassicas have been shown to be better at breaking up subsoil compaction compared to most grasses and legumes. Radish and brassica roots are especially gravitropic, meaning that they will try to grow vertically down into the subsoil no matter the obstacle. Additionally, in contrast to grasses, brassica roots undergo secondary growth, which is the widening of the roots, which is another important way these roots break up compaction. The radish root decomposes and disappears over winter, leaving the empty holes that the radish occupied the season before. Phacelia is a lesser known cover crop from the borage family. There are not many cover crops from this plant family. Phacelia is characterized as having a taproot and similar to brassicas has very fine roots so it can also be a great candidate to scavenge nitrogen. But in the northeast it's found to be slow to establish and tends to grow poorly. Sunflower is in the aster family. It's characterized by having a taproot and thicker roots that are well adapted for breaking up subsoil compaction. And it's a great drought tolerant cover crop to include in a summer cover crop mixture that will attract pollinators and build neighbor relations. Grass Legume Bicultures and Mixtures Combining grasses and legumes is a great strategy to help us get the greatest range of services by bringing together species that have different benefits. And they are self-regulating so that when soil nitrogen is low, the legume will fix nitrogen. But if soil nitrogen is high, the legume will be less competitive and the grass will scavenge nitrogen and prevent leaching. Here we have a commonly planted biculture of oats and Austrian winter peas. The Austrian winter pea is a great nitrogen fixer, but potentially produces less above ground and below ground biomass than oats or cereal rye. 